This is the story of Dracula, a creature who destroys all whom he touches. Dracula the terrifying, the feared, who sleeps in the tombs of the dead by day and arises at night to inflict his terror upon the innocent and the unsuspecting. Oh, you must help me. You must. You're my only hope. You must. I'll help you. I promise. Unfortunately, I've I've looked into the future and I see that the title of this is the part three of Dracula. I I forgot that we hadn't finished it because I kind of my eyes just glazed over partway through both the middle of the book and the middle of our summary of the book. Where last time, if you don't remember, go listen to it again. Uh, Van Helsing and the boys take a really long time to stop an undead child murderer. Like, they're really lackadaisical, and they don't seem to it's, have... It's JoJo's Stardust Crusaders all over again. They don't seem to have again. any real, like, any real need to to do this right away. Everything in, in old Victorian England took a long time. You gotta take hansoms and, and stagecoaches... It moved as the, the world only moved as fast as a horse they could gallop. Trains. If the undead is going to rise, then it's going to rise like I don't know, three to five business days. They had trains in this book. You think that just ruined everyone's day? Like, oh my god, now I can get to those dirty other European countries that aren't glorious England in a matter of hours instead of days or weeks. It was interesting how they suggested. You know, there's multiple ways the count could could travel at one point and not one of them was like freight train but that we'll yeah, get there favorite part so yeah first i want to say thank you to the maybe 10 people who are going to listen to this <laughs> another book podcast teaching my cat to read recently asked a question on twitter i'm fairly certain they don't listen to our podcast but should. it's a great um, podcast they they asked a question on Twitter that was uh, other podcasts that review books. How many episodes do you do per book? And I said uh, one if I care if anyone listens to it, <laughs> and two or more if if uh, it's just for me. This is one that's just for me. Uh, we've decided to go into extra innings on this. I know almost no one is going to listen to it, and I don't care. I'm here for you actually the numbers aren't that bad um they... they're not that bad i did see though we got eight more downloads for uh something wicked this way comes and then one for something <laughs> wicked this way comes part two <laughs> keep it in mind it's a very oh, popular gosh. episode but, uh, but no one probably finishes i think they listened to 30 seconds and then they turned it off just enough to get the download God, but not right. enough to uh get the listen if only we could sell ads on it it'd be perfect yeah, we were trying to fit this into two parts, and that didn't work. So now where are we doing after we after we killed Lucy? So we killed Lucy, and when we ended the last episode, Mina was waking up uh, down a few pints of blood and probably turning into a vampire. The boys patting themselves on the back for all the hard work they've done trying to track down Dracula. So at this point, Dracula has a bunch of properties all over southern England, uh, you know, the only part of England anyone would want to be in. <laughs> and they're trying to track down all his purchases. He he brought in all these boxes of dirt, as you remember. I do remember. Boxes, the boxes of dirt are important. I'm going to refresh your vampire memory. Dracula must rest in sacred ground. And so he brought his own sacred ground from Transylvania. Yeah, I feel like that's cheating, but okay. We're going to talk about probably the most interesting part of part three to me is when Van Helsing starts checking up on who Dracula was in life and who he has become in death. 
we all know that Dracula is, is loosely based on the real life Vlad the Impaler. But basically, in, in the fiction of the book, Dracula is this Transylvanian nobility who fought against the Ottoman Turks and lost, but just kept going, kept going. And if you're a D&D fan, they, they do jack some of this for the Curse of Strahd. A lot of it. Yeah, there's a point where only he survives, but he he doesn't die on the battlefield heroically because he knows that he is the only one who can eventually achieve victory. So he bravely escapes by himself <laughs> and returns to his castle to muster another army where he's getting all these men of fighting age. I do not know, but he raises army after army, Zap Brannigan style, and just throws them against the Ottoman Empire. In what is probably the single greatest loss of life his country has ever known. But that is brilliant and brave. Remember that. Not just anybody failed to beat the Turks that many times. So eventually, Dracula is described as this genius. He was strong, brave, bold, also very cunning and intelligent and crafty. And when he died, somehow he became a vampire. We don't know how. Maybe he made a deal with the devil. Maybe his family made a deal with the devil. There's all kinds of rumors. But one thing we know for certain is that when he came back, his brain wasn't... <laughs> I I did not know this was part of the Dracula myth until I read this book. He, he didn't um, remember everything. He He had what Van Helsing describes as a child brain. Yes. Meaning that he was kind of learning how to do things all over again. And so he has to experiment with the full extent of his powers. And I'm going to mention Jojo's bizarre adventure, which is an anime. I also do an anime podcast. That time I got reincarnated yeah, in the same world as an anime podcaster, but it's relevant because if you've watched Jojo season one, Dio is more closely based on Dracula than you might expect because the way they approach becoming a vampire is very similar so the first thing dracula does is he starts learning the limitations of his new form so he very purposely tests his powers when can he shape shift uh what can harm him you know sunlight garlic all the things van helsing has figured out dracula figures out as and it well. takes him like 500 years apparently to figure this out <laughs> i think I think they describe it takes him a couple of centuries, but all the while he's doing that, he's also maintaining his wealth. He's also maintaining his status and power, and he's he's growing more powerful still. And he is realizing that the Ottoman Empire is not the front lines of the of the civilized world anymore. Byzantium got long gone. Like we need to go where the new. Th the heartbeat of civilization is we need to go to London. And so he realizes very quickly that this is going to be a, a Herculean task. This is where you put in the the English national anthem or the United Kingdom national or the Britain, I don't know. Put in put in that glorious theme song that I don't even know what it is. If you think I will ever play God Save the Queen on this American podcast, you are dead wrong. Not even as a joke. I will play the American national anthem and you will stand with your hats over your hearts and you will tear up. So Dracula, right? There are, there are other undead. Van Helsing just sort of throws this out. Like, by the way, guys, world is filled with magical creatures oh, okay. but most undead are not dracula <laughs> dracula and and he describes this like very poetically like the devil found something special in dracula because dracula is an undead who can take this shit to the next level ordinary undead they prowl around their place of death for as long as they can until somebody eventually wises up to it and kills them. But Dracula doesn't go out like that. Dracula is smart enough to keep it secret or secret enough. And he's also smart enough to come up with this plan that should be impossible. 
There's all kinds of hurdles in his way. He can't go out in sunlight. He must sleep in sacred earth. He cannot cross running water. All of this should box him in, keep him relatively close to the place where he died. Yes. But he manages to use all the technologies and systems of the modern world. Boxes. Boxes full of dirt. <laughs> yes. It wasn't a very advanced time. <laughs> but manipulating the laws, building contacts in all these various countries, getting the funding, getting the lawyers in place. He learns English all on his own. He brings Jonathan Harker there to help him practice it against his will. <laughs> and He can't cross running water. No, that's How a thing. He... Like most ghosts or spirits can't cross running water. Okay. With like a bathtub? Like, would that work? No, it has to be running. It has to be like a river. Oh, but I mean, like, what if I turn on the bathtub? I mean, that's running. Could if work. If I push him into I mean, a shower in Dresden and turn files. it on, am I, like, is he going to just explode or something? You know, weirdly, the English never thought of showering. <laughs> Also on the the national anthem, because I was curious, one of the comments says this was like boss music for half of the world back then. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, When Dracula tries to cross running water, his body basically seizes. He can't move. He becomes paralyzed. He needs somebody to carry him across it. That's one of the things he's figured out. If somebody drags his ass across the running <laughs> water once he gets to the other end he can start moving okay so okay so yeah he's he's found technological ways around this such as boxes of dirt and a really strong dude <laughs> so the point is dracula is very intelligent he's very cunning of all the undead he is perhaps the most dangerous and that is why they have to stop him they have to stop him Because if they don't, if he escapes, if he is allowed to continue wandering the world, he can just wait for all these guys to die of old age, and then he can start again. And if he succeeds, he may create a demon landscape that he rules over. You know, who knows what his limits are? Maybe he can transcend, not unlike Dio from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Get the fuck out of here. (laughs) I thought he would be like Strahd and like already intelligent and know what he's doing, but this is like a little baby Strahd. It's not quite there. Yeah, I think I think about halfway through the book, Stoker may have realized uh, my OC might be a little too <laughs> too OP. You know, let's make him kind of dumb. And uh, it's like, oh yeah, that's right. You know, I was just sort of writing this erotic fan fiction about this guy I wanted to bang, but now. <laughs> I, uh, oh yeah, the boring guys have to win. So I guess he's new. I guess he's, I guess he's new at this, but that's his biggest weakness. And that's what they're going to use against him. His child brain, as Van Helsing puts so eloquently, is no match for their man brain. Yes. That is why we will win. Also, isn't it weird that friend Mina, beautiful Mina, uh, she keeps waking up just like paler and weaker and more tired and, she keeps having these weird nightmares about demon eyes. Like, that's weird, right? Anyway, don't tell her anything because she can't handle it. Yeah. So I think I want to I wanna skip straight to the goods where Renfield... Oh, you don't uh, want to go to the part where they find his mansion and they go in and then rats come and then they, they scare them off and then they're like, oh... Some of the dirt is here, but not all of the dirt is here. We must not do anything just yet, because then he'll know what we can do. So I guess, goodbye. No, <laughs> I, I don't. So, yeah, we're going to skip over this. So just just imagine that the the job of the the boys is now they are full-time Dracula If you hunters. saw, like, Dragon Ball Z back in the day... Imagine it exactly as it was, just with all that filler, all that stuff that, like, maybe could have been cut down. That's in this book. It took Goku six days to get to Planet Namek. Oh, my God. Did it really? Because it felt like yes. years. Years. It took him forever yes. to get down Snake Way. That The Saiyans coming in one year actually took one year in real time. That's how this book's pacing is. 
the book is paced very badly from this point on. <laughs> from this so point on, I'm gonna skip. What? <laughs> the book is paced very badly. Okay. Okay. All right. So now we're. I'm gonna skip we're straight to Renfield. one night. One night after a hard day of Dracula fighting and smoking cigars Drinking in whiskey. the room without Mina because it it is a literal boys club. They have their no girls allowed sign. Yeah, if she smokes and, a cigar, she would explode in flames. You can't have that. Yeah, it's no girls allowed, but like for a noble reason. Yeah. Not a misogynistic of reason, which is also kind of misogynistic. But like we're not we're not there yet. We're not there yet as a society. So then they get this call like, guys, you got to come quick. Renfield, I, I, I was alone with him and, um, oh boy, I, he just started beating himself savagely, I think. Because like, wow, he's almost dead. He, are you talking about where his neck is broken or his, his back is broken? Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, I think he fell out of bed. He, he fell out of bed and broke his back and also broke beat his face i think and the, and they're like huh how could he have d- both beat himself and broken his back well he didn't so they go to find they go to see renfield and and the attendant who's supposed to be watching renfield admits to uh sleeping on the job <laughs> but oh oh god i'm losing my license <laughs> yeah to my untrained eyes uh I it it sure looks to me like that attendant might have just killed Renfield. <laughs> <laughs> but, but is the the question this book's a, this book asks more than any other is Can we blame a foreigner for medical malpractice? And the answer is yes. What if there was someone else to blame? <laughs> and it's Dracula. It's always Dracula. What if there's so. someone else to blame? <laughs> <laughs> I know your I know your wife or girlfriend just died, but what if a foreigner was to blame? Would that make you feel better? Hey Arthur, I know you're real sad right now, but did you see him? Did you see the Romanian count who did this? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go get him, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, somebody has clearly beaten Renfield half to death. He obviously did not do this himself. Although they keep wondering if he did or if he could. And it's like, no. It's one of those, like, he shot himself in the back of the head six times kind of situations. <laughs> like, there's there's just no way Renfield did this to himself. It, it looks like he was beaten unconscious and then beaten some more. And then somebody just picked him up like Bane and snapped his back like, like Batman. Like and dried spaghetti, just... <laughs> Yeah, so Re- Renfield is is in a bad way, but fortunately, Doctor Van Helsing is also a brain surgeon. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he's also a lawyer. I didn't mention that, but he's also a lawyer. Uh, he, he wears a I lot wonder, of hats. I wonder if maybe and again, maybe Van Helsing has lived maybe a little longer than we think. Yeah, I, I'm a I'm a doctor and a lawyer in Holland. Don't worry about it. My my degree's in Dutch. You wouldn't understand it. And so, Van, but Van Helsing is a brain surgeon. So they his so Renfield's brain is swelling because of the head trauma. So they cut a little hole in the skull and drain some of that I don't know, brain fluid, whatever's in there. I mean, uh, that is a a procedure, but it's just to allow the brain to expand. But you know. Why not? Brain fluid, sure. And Renfield comes back to consciousness. He's dying. Don't worry. But he's what dying. do they do but to help him out? Brandy. Yeah, you better believe they get him some brandy. <laughs> I honestly forgot. I just figured there was probably brandy. Yes, it was either brandy or whiskey. But the, yeah, they give Renfield brain surgery and brandy, and he's ready to talk. He's like, okay, he's super eloquent now for some reason. I assumed his eloquence was the result of like Dracula taking over his mind, but uh, in this case, he's just actually really smart. So, well, I think when he gets close to Dracula, doesn't he become less insane? I think that yeah, was but set I thought that earlier. was because Dracula was. I thought that's because Dracula was controlling him. 
Yeah, okay, that's fair. I also thought that, so it is weird. But, that but Dracula so is eloquent. not controlling him at this point. Yeah, because yeah. he's being a little traitor. He's he's dropping dime on his boy Dracula. He's being a little snitch. Yeah, snitches already got stitches. We're going to break but, your back again, buddy. Oh, and that is what happens, actually. Let me finish the story. Renfield starts explaining the whole thing. He's like, it all started when I was born in a young wheat field in North Hampstead. Yada, yada, yada. He continues on for I don't know how many hours. Yeah, just like, aren't you dying? Can we speed this up? To bring it back to anime, it is an anime death monologue. He has exactly the amount of life left he needs to get out his entire tragic backstory (laughs) and not one breath more. (laughs) Renfield says that... Yeah, okay, you kind of caught me red-handed here. I was working with the vampire. But, like, I didn't know he was one of those vampires that killed people. (laughs) And so, like, when he told me, let him in, and he used his hypnosis, he probably used hypnosis on me, you know, now that I'm thinking about it. Like, I wouldn't have just let him in. Yeah, it wasn't my fault. Yeah, I was probably coerced. So keep that in mind, too. Um in case I survive this, I'm going to survive this. Right. And, uh, so he, he hypnotizes me. Right. And he says, he's like, invite me in. Uh, and I'm like, N- okay, you can come in. And he, he's like, okay, I'm in. And, uh, then the next night he comes in again and I'm like, Hey man, when are you going to give me all that stuff you told me, like eternal life and, and ungodly and powers Lots and of dra- blood. Yum. Yum. Yeah. Yeah, and Dracula's like, <laughs> no. And Renfield's like, oh, it'd be like that, do it. And then he uh, takes a swing at Dracula, and Dracula knows Kratmagat, so he just breaks Renfield's arm, leg, and torso <laughs> and leaves him a shattered heap on the floor, which uh, I guess brings me to the present moment. And like I said, Renfield's been going on for quite some time. And at this point, they're like, wait, wait, sorry. I just tuned into that. Dracula's here? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Like, well, he was here like seven hours ago when I started my story, but. Yeah. And then Renfield's like, oh, I'm unconscious. Like one eye open, like, go. Give that man man the strong stuff while we go find Dracula. So they run, they run to Madame Mina and they bust down the door and they find a scene, I'm going to say, right out of Brazzers. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> Here's the scene as it is described. And you tell me if, if this book, like, I have a theory. And I, I said this on Twitter the other day. I have a theory that... Uh, people who complain about things departing from the source material usually have not read the source material. And people who complain that they remember when vampires were scary and not sexy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say they've definitely never read Dracula because here is what we walk in on. Dracula is shirtless. Yeah. Mina is in her uh, dressing gown, which is as naked as a Victorian woman ever gets. Nice. And he... Harker, I think, is on the ground. (laughs) Harker is like stuck in a hypnotic spell being forced to like, I don't know, watch. It's kind of like cock fetish stuff. He had to, he had to, he had to pull out the Victorian version of a camera, which takes 30 minutes to take a picture. He's got to watch that whole time. So Dracula is shirtless. Mina is in a state of undress. Mina's neck is bleeding. Dracula has fed on her. And now Dracula takes takes his long fingernail and slits his muscular chest open so that a little bit of blood trickles down. And then he forces Mina to drink it. And Mina is is sitting there drinking Dracula's blood and they're both kind of like wiggling on the bed. And and Van Helsing's like, mine got, or the Dutch equivalent. (laughs) And uh, they crosses, boys, get your crosses out. Come on now. And then Dracula hisses and falls back and they're like, uh, uh, Quincy Morris runs out to, to to try to shoot him, and I think he does. Ow! <laughs> Mina wakes up. Like they, they're able to wake Mina and John up, and Mina goes into this like absolute crisis. 
And and you tell me, Nate, what what is your perception of Mena's reaction? Is her reaction one of somebody who was uh, like forced to drink blood? It's not like an you I was drinking blood reaction. It's a I'm like go on. <laughs> do, do, like uh, maybe you're not picking up on what I'm putting down here. I can't believe Jonathan had to watch the whole thing from the closet with his pants <laughs> down. It's not. I can't I mean, believe not, Dracula made me do that. Yeah. That, that was, it's uh, not that weird, I, I, like right, in, in a, I'm stuttering now. In, in all honesty, it's not funny. And I'm I'm putting it in the middle of a funny banter. But the the sex metaphor is yes. real. Yes, and, and also I read that at the time it was also seen as a way of like violating the husband as well. Well, yeah, because he you, was there and get, he wasn't you get man to enough to stop her. her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it seems very much like essentially they're trying to say that Dracula has raped Mina. That metaphor is going to get so, shockingly. I know that that's going to get problematic. Yeah, bit, bit much when uh, God rejects her. Um, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a bit uh, unpleasant. Well, when God rejects her, when she starts becoming a vampire, and she's connected to the count, like the count has taken a piece of her that Jonathan doesn't even have. It. Yeah. On one hand, I want to say. It does make Dracula more monstrous. You want to have your monsters do monstrous things. On the other hand, I feel like maybe Bram Stoker sometimes tries to have his cake and eat it too with the, this is clearly a metaphor for something else. But then when it gets too problematic, guys, it's just a vampire story. Right. So, yeah, I don't know. Keep that in your mind. I don't know how much he ever talked publicly about this. I doubt he would. Ad- I, I doubt he would admit. No, of to- course not. If he would have admitted that. He would have been banished from the realm. They certainly wouldn't have continued to print it. But yeah, there's there's definitely an emasculation of Jonathan, a violation of Mina. The the boys, needless to say, they failed. So at some point, we just we just up the stakes, dog. Because if Mina dies, she'll become a vampire. Well, bef- yeah, that's true. But uh, quick, like the one, uh, so everybody's taking care of Mina. Quincy Morris is out there shooting vampires like a badass. And uh, Jonathan Seward remembers he's actually responsible for the care of a patient and runs back to see how <laughs> my man with the uh, brain exposed to the open air is doing. And uh, oh, not he's, good. He's- he, he's dead. Uh, he, yeah, on the way out, Dracula just beat the crap out of him again, and uh, he didn't survive it this time. <laughs> just because. Yeah, no, it's like he saw Renfield squirming, and, and Renfield just, just went down. Went down he like just, a sack he, of bricks. He, he kicked him right in the brain hole. <laughs> yep. Yep, right in the brain hole. So, yeah, like you <laughs> and, said. And the attendant is like, I swear it was a foreign man. It wasn't me. <laughs> Yeah, we find out Redfield owed him money, but, you know, it's... And then uh, Seward, like he does surprisingly often in his career, manages to dodge an inquest, saying that Renfield, a healthy man in his 40s, was brutally mangled, uh, falling out of bed. (laughs) As you do. You trip, you fall out of bed, your brain cracks open like a fucking egg, uh, spills everywhere out of your skull, and then you sleep, beat the shit out of yourself as you break your back. Yeah. Easy. They managed to dodge an inquest. Obviously, no coroner <laughs> looks at Renfield's thank, body. Thank God. <laughs> because it would be very apparent he did not, in fact, fall out of bed. <laughs> Can you imagine how much slower this would be if if he had to go through the legal system? Oh, my God. Maybe it could be a lot shorter when they all go to jail. <laughs> no, I, I swear it was a foreign man. Oh, how many of let's, your men? Let's how, go like, get him. Wait, wait a minute. How many of your friends are staying in your hospital that receives public funding? 
Yeah, so now we have a ticking clock because here's the problem. And it's going to get a little muddy here. Dracula did something with Mina that he did not do with Lucy. He forced Mina to drink his blood. And this is a vampire quirk that gets used and reused in a lot of vampire stories. Oh, Lucy never did this? I don't think so. So it seems like Dracula... I'll, I'll go into my reasoning for that. But it seems like Dracula rules are Dracula feeds on you. If you die after he's fed on you, you will become a vampire. Unless Dracula dies first. If Dracula dies, then the spell he has put on you is broken and you are free. If you feed on Dracula's blood, then you are connected to Dracula mentally, psychically. In other vampire stories, sometimes the change only happens if you drink the other vampire's blood. Sometimes uh, it always happens. But I think there's, if vampires feed every night, and then how do they not turn an entire town into a vampires? And like vampires should grow exponentially, but they don't. So we need to explain that by maybe vampires selectively turn people. But yeah. in this case, I don't know. But he takes his time and he eats the same meal every day. (laughs) I don't think that Dracula had Lucy feed on him because he never spied on them through Lucy. And Uh. Lucy never was aware of Dracula's presence only when he was using his hypnosis on her. That's fair. Is that the only reason he does it? I think so. I think, he, well, he's also trying to put Mina under his power. Like, I think Dracula needs to be physically close to somebody to use hypnosis unless he does this thing. Once he does this thing, Mina is connected to him no matter how far apart they get. Now, unfortunately for Dracula, it cuts both ways. And fortunately for <laughs> the boys... <laughs> Mina is not a complete idiot. Oh, I uh, you were in fact, say Van Helsing is also a hypnotist. <laughs> Van Helsing is also a hypnotist. <laughs> Mina is actually the one who comes up with this idea. Mina realizes that at sunrise, when Dracula's powers are the weakest, she is able to break free of his spell. And she asks Van Helsing to hypnotize her at that point because he isn't in total control of her yet, but he can control her enough that he can make her not talk about vampires, make her not talk about him. But at sunrise, that crumbles and Van Helsing is able to hypnotize her and start asking her questions. And from this... They're able to glean Dracula's location and whereabouts. Now, the first thing they do, understandably, is they go track down all of Dracula's locations in England. They find all the boxes of dirt except one. And at the last house they're at, they find Dracula. He comes in while they're in there. Well, hold on. They destroy those boxes by shoving a little bit of the Jesus into them with the, the bread. Yeah, I, that confused me. Actually, they took Maybe some I... of G- took some of the Jesus wafers and they just shoved it into that dirt and sterilized Here... it. So here's my question. Maybe you can answer me, Nate. But I doubt if you it. flew a plane over the Count's castle and just dropped wafers from the sky like bombs, would it destroy him? Yes, absolutely. If the Count must rest in sacred earth, how? Does putting a sacred object in the sacred earth negate the sacredness of the sacred the, earth? I figured the sacred earth was sacred to him. It's no, dirt from I don't his homeland. So. It's sacred to him because it's from his personal churchyard. Yeah, and that is orthodox dirt, Ben. <laughs> orthodox dirt. I thought yeah, we established he was a Catholic. We're putting in the old 
Western Church, the Roman Catholicism, or or perhaps the, the Henry the Eighth, the, the Henry the Eighth crackers. <laughs> point is, they're able the to do a magic is, spell. The point is, Dracula worships a different god that's just different enough that if we put in the Jesus wafers, it negates that god's power. Checkmate, Dracula. The point is, they're able to do a magic spell to make the earth unusable to Dracula. So Wait, Jesus wafers. So yeah, they they find one of his houses and they wait. They lie in wait for Dracula. I like this part. You you go ahead, and then I'll I'll tell you how the ending came off to me. Okay. <laughs> so they're all in this house, waiting to see what happens. Doorknob starts turning there's a key in the lock door opens up it's dracula it's covered in blood he walks in dracula senses something is amiss he like leaps into the room like a weirdo yeah and uh then uh, jonathan this is all from dr seward's perspective jonathan's going nuts man like dracula messed with his girl and now jonathan you're not catching me asleep this time i'm gonna knife you i'm gonna shiv you and uh, yeah, he doesn't. Dracula's very fast and agile. But and Jonathan's an out of shape lawyer. <laughs> but, <laughs> but and also, I don't think knives kill Draculas. But anyway, uh, the, then uh, like uh, Van Helsing and and Seward react and and they whip out their crosses and they start backing Dracula up and then Dracula just matrix jumps through a window and runs screaming into the night yeah no what he does is he's like you guys think that you're so clever but i've been doing this for hundreds of years i've scattered earth all over the place you are all mine and your women are mine (laughs) you spoke so loud your discord cut out i have no idea what you said He's he's taunting them, right? He's like, you're As he, all mine. Yeah. And then he like, he just like, he runs away. <laughs> and, yeah, he, he runs away in such a frantic panic that yeah. he is just hemorrhaging like money and papers and important yes. documents. And they're you just like falling out of his coat as he bluffing. trips over a log yeah. and then yeah. just gets back up and runs some more. I'm, I'm going to get all you guys. You can't even stop me. Now, if you'll excuse me. <laughs> and, and Van Helsing, like Jonathan turns around and he's like, what are we going to do? And uh, he catches Van Helsing in the middle of pocket in a bunch of money. He's like, well, first we're going to take all of this. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> You know, in case, you know, he comes back and he wants to use it, at least it'll be in our hands for, you know, yeah, us, yeah, us to definitely. use it. <laughs> uh, good old England taking away foreigners' money and, and assets. Hey, hold on, I'll be right back. Suddenly, with a single bound, he leaped into the room, winning away past us before any of us could raise a hand to stay him. There was something so panther-like in his movement, something so unhuman that it seemed to sober us all from the shock of his coming. The first act was Harker, who, with a quick movement, threw himself before the door, leading into the room into the front of his house. As the Count saw us, a horrible snarl passed over his face, showing the eye-teeth long and pointed. But the evil smile is quickly passed into a cold stare of lion-like disdain. His expression again changed as with a single impulse. We all advanced upon him. It was a pity that we had not some better organized plan of attack. For even at the moment, I wondered what we were to do. I did not myself know whether our lethal weapons would avail us anything. Harker evidently meant to try the matter, for he had ready his great kukri knife and made a fierce and sudden cut at him. The blow was a powerful one. Only the diabolical quickness of the Count's leap back saved him. A second less, and the trenchant blade had shorn through his heart. As it was, the point just cut the cloth of his coat, making a wide gap once a bundle of blank notes and a stream of gold fell out. 
The expression of the Count's face was so hellish that for a moment I feared for Harker. Though I saw him throw the terrible knife aloft again for another stroke, instinctively I moved forward with a protective impulse, holding the crucifix and wafer in my left hand. I felt a mighty power fly along my arm, and it was without surprise that I saw the monster cower back before a similar movement made spontaneously by each of us. It would be impossible to describe the expression of hate and baffled malignity, of anger and hellish rage, which came over the Count's face. His waxen hue became greenish-yellow by the contrast of his burning eyes, and the red scar on his forehead showed on the pallid skin like a palpitating wound. The next instant, with a sinuous dive, he swept under Harker's arm, ere his blow could fall, and grasping a handful of the money from the floor, dashed across the room, threw himself at the window. Amid the crash and glitter of the falling glass, he tumbled into the flagged area below. Through the sound of shivery of the shivering glass, Jesus, what? I could hear the ting of gold as some of the softness <laughs> fell on the flagging. We ran over and saw him spring unhurt from the ground. He, rushing up the steps, crossed the flagged yard and pushed open the stable door. There he turned and spoke to us. You think to have baffled me with your pale faces all in a row? I don't know why we had to get weird about the color of their faces. Like a sheep in a butcher's. You shall be sorry, each one of you. You think you have left me without a place to rest, but I have more. My revenge has just begun. I I spread it over centuries. And the... And and time is on my side. I'm, you're, I'm a big boy. And your you girls not. that you all love are already mine. And through them, you and others shall yet be mine. My creatures to do my bidding to be my jackals when I want to feed. Bah! With a contemptuous <laughs> sneer, he passed quickly through the door. And we heard the rusty bolt creak as he, as he locked the door <laughs> <laughs> oh no yeah, I, I just decided to read that that part while you were on your on your break and they're like mina what do you see and this is after she's been like i need you guys to hypnotize me i've got all this important shit i'm sure i can tell you mina what do you see nothing oh okay i was gonna say i think it's just what like, it's dark what it's what's dark around you nothing what do you hear i don't know water maybe what what's your favorite color N- nothing the the empty void of space uh, so eventually Mina is able to get out that she hears water lapping on uh, the side of the walls around her and what sounds like a bunch of semen running around above her. And Van Helsing's like, aha, he's on a ship. And everybody's like, I, I hear one of them. He's saying, boy. Nothing bad's going to happen here. Wouldn't it be weird if, like, something happened like that Russian ship? Thank God that won't ever happen to our glorious ship. Ha ha ha, am I right? Besides, Kent? spirits can't move on flowing water. Ooh. Ooh. Oh dear. <laughs> maybe, well, maybe, maybe he has to be physically in the water? That... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he just doesn't have all his powers. Who knows? It's it's not super consistent. Like with as many powers and convoluted weaknesses as Dracula has, it probably the quicker Stoker gets out of here, the better. Before we all start thinking too hard about it, which uh, he's not quicker. Going to. Quicker is not. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not what. Um, it's not 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 how uh, he does yeah. things. So yeah. they. 
the the boys come up with the ingenious idea of running to the shipyard right this very moment and i guess checking every ship in the river thames which is a lot of ships probably and, and most of them are going to tell tell the boys to fuck off um helsing stops them he's like what if we went about this not like idiots and they're what if like we- what what if we use our know knowledge of the Count? What do we know about him? We know... You know he... he's a dumb little baby boy. Yeah, we know he's a dumb little baby boy whose child brain is weaker than our man brain. And we know that when he was alive, whenever he got defeated by the Turks, which was often... He would, he would, he would tell them that he was going to get his vengeance on them and that they were nothing compared to him while he was running and fear pissing at the same time. Yeah. So, where would he go after he just got his ass kicked by surprisingly Jonathan Harker? <laughs> Jonathan, Jonathan Harker, I don't know who why now I have to put it that way, Jonathan Harker, who now has this kukri knife, and it is like polishing it like a like a fevered madman. Anyway, Van Helsing's like we know that whenever Dracula gets his ass beat. He runs back home. He's yep, going back to Transylvania. So let's look for ships that are going that way. That should narrow it down, right? So we eventually figure out what ship he's on. But unfortunately, it's already left. Damn I'm it. going to tell you something right now. Taking a little break from the summary. I've read Dracula. This will be the third time. Every time I get to this part where they start chasing the ship and they start chasing Dracula to Transylvania. I lose all interest in the book. (laughs) And the first time I read Dracula, I got to this part. I stopped. I read three other books and I came back to it and then finished it. This goes on way too long. This is the fellowship of the ring of Dracula. This is just walking from place to, to place while nothing of any importance happens. So I'm not going to detail the entire thing. All I'm going to say is they finally agree to let Mina back into the loop because they realized that that was stupid. Well, they also realize that the whole Dracula Mina psychic connection thing, while it is to their advantage, Everything Mina hears, Dracula might hear. So they need to be careful with what they tell her. It's a much better reason for not talking to her than the first one, which was because she has fragile lady parts that might shrivel up and die if she hears. (laughs) Yes. Yep. Yeah, no, this time they're they're like, yeah, hey, Mina, we're going to definitely go after Dracula, who is... I don't know, in France or something? And in the West, definitely. That is where we are going. They don't want to take Mina with them. But Mina points out something uh, that kind of forces them to take Mina with them, which is she can feel that Dracula has some psychic power over her. If Dracula commands her to come to him or to do anything, really, she'll do it. Even if that means lying to them, tricking them. And let's be real. How hard could that be? So if you leave me here, I, you're probably never going to see me again. So why don't you take me with you where you can keep an eye on me and maybe I can help out. You can keep hypnotizing me. We can sort of track where he's going. And Van Helsing mercifully this time realizes that is a good idea. And they take her with them. As it goes on, Mina goes through a phase where she's almost catatonic. Dracula is completely taking over her. But then they get pretty close to catching him. And he gets away, barely. He just barely beats them off the ship. They they arrive like literally hours after Dracula's gone. And he at that point severs the connection with Mina. At least on his end. Uh, yes, because so, their hypnotism is not not helpful at the end. Yeah. So And they split up, didn't they? They do they split up to cover yet? more ground. 
Yeah, and, search for clues, Scoob. Yeah. But once Mina is freed, she can at least start using her brain again. And Mina starts thinking about, okay, where could Dracula have gotten out? Let's look at the geography, and now I, everyone who's taken English middle school, you, you learn this in your geography classes, but pull out your textbook on Eastern Europe and like, all right, he would probably go through this pass here, and there's a channel here, so he would need people to cross, help him get across there if he was going there, but this road... <sighs> Mina actually does a smart thing. I don't, I don't hate how Mina figures it out. I, I don't mind that she figures it out. What I would have liked to see was the, the scene where Mina puts together all the clues, smash cut to action, not more <laughs> walking. No, we need more discussion. So Mina figures out that basically Dracula had to leave this place. He's going to Transylvania. We know where he's going. So how could he get there? He could get there by land or sea. He could go by uh, the road, which would be very risky. He could go by sea, which would also be very risky because if that ship goes down, he can't move over flowing water, which again, how did he kill all those Russians? But don't think about it. Doesn't count. Yeah. Boats don't count. If the boat goes down though, the water. Yeah. He can't swim. He Dracula ate the gum gum fruit and now he can't swim in water. (laughs) And, (laughs) <laughs> to bring it back to anime. This is a very anime episode. So anime Dracula, it's the same thing. He's made of undead. How did that happen? Yo ho ho, he took a bite of gum gum. He's made of rubble. How did that happen? Yo ho ho, he took a bite of gum gum. There's got to be and all the stupid one. I have, I have, I'm <laughs> not familiar with One Piece, but like somebody's got to have eaten like the blood blood fruit or something. <laughs> They've got to have done vampires. There's like a million chapters. They've got to have done vampires at some point. <laughs> Good morning and welcome back to another video. And today we are going to be talking about the Bato Bato no Me or the Bat Bat Fruit Model Vampire. The Bato Bato no Me Model Vampire is a game exclusive mythical. Zo- what the fuck is it? What is this? Okay, it's a game type fruit. That is eaten by Patrick Redfield. See see what they did there? I do. Yeah. Anyway, so Mina figures out he'd probably go by water, but he doesn't want to risk any, like it would be most responsible not to risk anything out on the open ocean. So there is a river system he could take almost the entire way to his castle that is used for shipping it's deep enough there's plenty of boats on it he could get there oh man it would suck if this had happened in modern day because like half of that shit would be dried up now well he'd have just flown and he'd have been there already but yeah you're right i guess actually that would have really Yeah, dracula would have just flown his own private jet back to transylvania (laughs) and that would have been the end of this or dracula would have bought spacex and he would have shipped a box to mars and he and Elon could escape and I don't know. Or 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 we would just welcome being turned into undead immortals because like there's we're not gonna be able to sustain ourselves otherwise. No, no. Right? I need to be able to cross flowing Shit. water for my job. Don't worry about it. She figures out exactly what river he's on and exactly where he's going. So they need Yeah. Smash cut two more talking. Yeah. So basically they split up and the boys wind up going one way uh, and and Mina and Van Helsing wind up going another way. And the only interesting thing that happens here is that Mina and Van Helsing have like these, this bonding moment, this journey and Mina eventually stops writing and Van Helsing starts writing and yeah, it's also really weird that you, you put your two smartest characters together and you just kind of hope that the other two groups don't, like, accidentally drown or something. V- Mina is slowly starting to succumb to the vampire poison. Give her some blood. Give her some blood, God damn it! And she's becoming more lethargic. She's not 
eating. Her teeth are getting kind of sharp. And every once in a while, she looks at Van Helsing like maybe she's going to kill him. And Van Helsing's like, "Uh uh-oh. And Nate, tag in. (laughs) (laughs) I just remember that they kill the three vampire brides. That's all you remember? (laughs) This is Editor Ben here. I just cut a large section of Nate rambling through kind of the end of Dracula. Um, At the time, neither one of us really was up to speed on it. I think he'd read a couple of books since reading Dracula, and we were recording this one kind of late. I had not finished my reread. I'm sorry, but I have since finished my reread, and I actually remember what happened now. Uh, I didn't when we recorded, and so it wound up being kind of a mess. I'm going to cut most of that. That will go on the Patreon if you want to hear a disaster unfold in real time. But for those of you who are just here for the uh, the real literature portion of the podcast, here's what actually happens. Van Helsing and Mina decide they're going to head straight for Castle Dracula while the boys are chasing after Dracula's boat. Most of the book then takes place from the perspective of Van Helsing and Mina. So Mina is getting worse and worse. She's succumbing more and more to the vampire disease or curse. And it gets to the point where Van Helsing doesn't feel comfortable around her. And so he breaks up one of the communion wafers and places it in a circle around Mina while she's sleeping. And when Mina gets up, she can't cross it. So she is now being fully affected by all of the vampire weaknesses. One night, as they are very near Castle Dracula, the three vampire brides come out and they try to tempt Van Helsing. But fortunately, Van Helsing has broken up the wafer around his camp and they can't come into the camp. Mina recognizes what they are. She warns Van Helsing not to go. And Van Helsing is somewhat encouraged by the fact that Mina still can retain enough disgust and and revulsion of these women that she doesn't want to be one of them. Van Helsing also knows, though, he can't take him in a fight. So, he resolves to wait until the day when they will be forced to rest in their tombs, and then he goes to Castle Dracula during the day and basically finds every tomb, cuts their head off, and stakes their hearts. That's how the vampire brides get dealt with. Then, while he's there, he makes sure to uh, also do his his little ritual on Dracula's coffin so that Dracula can't use his coffin again. Basically ensuring that even if Dracula gets past them, he will not be able to return to his castle. But fortunately, that winds up not being a big concern because the two of them decide okay, we did everything we can do here. We obviously got here before Dracula, so let's go see if we can meet the boys halfway so they get to this hill and from there they watch like a whole whole ass battle unfold the boys have caught up to dracula dracula's in a wagon now he's being carried over land by his uh pet romani and the 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 boys have these big repeating rifles and the romani are armed with like maybe a few pistols here and there and knives and they're able to quickly like you know make the romani pull over and uh one of the romani tells them to gun it and and there's a bunch of confusion so there's this whole chase and a gunfight and and quincy gets stabbed he gets stabbed in the gut and then uh they I don't think they kill many people, if any. I don't, I don't think a lot of people die except <laughs> Quincy. Spoilers. But, yeah, they get to the thing. Jonathan Harker is in full-blown rage goblin mode. He he just upends Dracula right off that cart, whips open the tomb, brings down that knife, cuts Dracula's fucking head off in one motion. And then uh, Quincy stabs him in the heart. But Quincy then collapses. He is dying. So Mina and Van Helsing, they run over there. And 
Van Helsing's an everything doctor, but you know he's not that much of an everything doctor that he can fix whatever gut wound Quincy's got. So Quincy's going to do that thing where he can say everything he wants to say and not a breath more and then die. And he talks about how like, oh, the mark on Mina's forehead healed. Oh, she's she's obviously not a vampire anymore. Now that Dracula's dead, she's cured. Hooray. Okay. Then there's a little epilogue type deal where it's been seven years since the Dracula adventure and everybody's still friends. They all still hang out. And Jonathan Harker and Mina have had two children. The first son they had is named Quincy. That's a little dedication thing to them. And they're sitting around and they're talking about how, like, you know, nobody's ever going to believe this happened. Like, there's this whole big thing that, like, you know, we saved the world, kind of, I guess. And nobody's ever going to know. And, and, Van Helsing's like, hey, we don't got to convince him. We just, you know, we just tell our story. We just, you know, this little one, he's like balancing Jonathan Harker's kid on his lap. He's like, this little one's going to know one day, you know, that like what a hero his mom was and, and all the guys who decided to help his mom in her time of need. And and that that's going to be just, that's going to be enough. And there's, it's kind of implied that this book we're reading is the it was compiled for their children to read to understand and that somebody has decided to to share it with the public at large as well and maybe it all really happened the end i'm gonna end with like the only thing (laughs) I'm, i'm gonna edit back in here resume the conversation with the only thing we got right from what wound up being like 10 minutes I've cut from the episode. Again, if you want to hear a disaster unfold in real time, if you think this would be funny, uh, and trust me, it is as well as embarrassing considering we are bookmen, uh, check out our Patreon. (laughs) Okay. Bye. And I remember Dracula, he gets in his homeland and he, He smirks a a smirk of victory. He's proud that he has won. And at that moment, Harker cuts his goddamn head off with a knife at the same time that Quincy stabs him with a stake right into his heart. And he crumbles to dust. I'm going to tell you, the, the, the travel log portion of Dracula... It's hands down, the pacing the worst. is awful. yeah. It is yeah. So much just telling and not showing. It it is just so much of the characters just ruminating on their emotions and what they're feeling and what they wish they could be doing and how tragic their situation is, but how much they love and respect one another and. I know this sounds like good stuff and it is good stuff to like think it is good stuff to journal for you, for your, it is not good stuff for the finale. Yeah, it's, it's not, <laughs> we're racing. Against it's not time. good novel writing. Like, yeah. Positive self care. You do you journaling is very healthy. Talk about your feelings. Tell people you love them. That's great. But like there's a vampire killing people somewhere. Can I hear about that? Yeah, I don't know. It, it just, it seems like he didn't really know what to do. And he just kind of just, just keeps going. And just going. And I don't know why. It took Jonathan Harker five minutes to get to Transylvania in the beginning. I do not know why this becomes an epic quest when they try to do it the second time. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't just jump on a train take the carriage out to the Borgo Pass, and just sit there in the yeah. pass. It's the only way to get to his castle. Soon as that motherfucker rolls up to the pass, you start cutting him, you start throwing crosses and holy water and Nilla wafers. and. So we've got plenty of time for final thoughts. Nate, what do you think of Dracula? This is your first read, right? This is my first full read. I tried to read it in the past and I fell asleep partway through reading the beginning 
And I was just like, I guess I'm done. So what? So you probably knew a little bit about what to expect from the book. I did not. I expected more Dracula and more vampire and less. Let's go to this mausoleum three or four nights in a row and let me try to convince you that vampires are a thing and oh you don't quite believe me let's come back tomorrow night and i'll have some proof then oh you thought that her grave her body was moved oh okay well let's go back there tomorrow night it's like there's definitely we just there's definitely an issue of like stoker having ideas and not wanting to throw any of them out this is a book that i could despite it being a classic like it could be edited to be better it is a cool idea hire us bram hire us bram you dead son (laughs) of a bitch but uh no it could be like the idea of having lucy not be in the grave of finding the grave empty that's creepy where is she that's very creepy but like van helsing already knew where she was so that's one of those things like in the story it doesn't make a lot of sense if van helsing knew that lucy was out walking around why didn't he just show jonathan that um like could we have followed van helsing the first time he found the the grave empty and then the first time he saw her come back in and then nope it's better to hear it described to you yeah it, it It's constantly trying to balance the plausibility of the journals and such. And the journals, like, the the problem is they're just never going to be that plausible. And I know it's trying to give an insight into the characters, and it does. I think the problem is, though, it does too much and too few at the same time. I know a lot about the characters who journal. I know a lot about Mina and, and John Seward and Jonathan Harker and Van Helsing don't know much about arthur i don't know much about quincy i don't know what they really are to each other i know that they went on like hunting trips but they don't know what they hunt i know that they're real good bros i know that they all went after the same girl because like it's starting to get suspicious that none of us date women At this point in our lives, but like, you know, we only see Arthur's grief at losing Lucy through Mina's eyes. I don't even really know how well Arthur knew Lucy. It sounds like he met her a couple of times and determined that, yeah, she's hot enough, rich enough. Let's do it. Why not? Like, it, it, I don't know. It doesn't seem very compelling, their romance. Mina and Jonathan is done better. I like the way that they constantly support each other. I think it's an interesting dynamic that's not shown in a lot of novels from that age that I've read. I haven't read a lot of, like, husband and wife team-up novels like this. Yeah, because usually... Uh the wife dies so the husband will have a uh, (laughs) he'll have motivation to go after the monster yeah so on one hand i think that stoker i respect some of the choices he made with mina and like i said i know the whole idea of having her get attacked and, and violated by dracula while jonathan is basically cuckolded is problematic and then there's the the bit with As Mina is turning into a vampire, she is unable to touch the sacred objects. She can't have the communion wafer. So, like, God is literally rejecting her form. And, you know, so that's when, like, mm, the rape thing, you want to be real careful with what you're saying there. Yeah. Because it's not, I I don't think it's an allegory for rape particularly, but... Like, I don't think the vampire is meant to be a rape allegory. I just think that, like, what Dracula did to her is similar in terms of how violating it was. And again, even that is problematic because they are very different things. And overall, I th- I think there's a lot good here. And I think 
Like with many of these things, when you return to the source, it can be a little disappointing because most of the good has been mined out, refined, and done better elsewhere. Right. Like with the haunting of Hill House. Like with House. the haunting of Hill House. There there are a few I think Dracula holds up. Honestly, I do. I think it is still I think parts of it yeah, hold up. I, I would I understand think, skipping. I think that around. the pacing is the is the weakest part of this book. There's a lot of good ideas. There is a lot of interesting stuff happening. I really like especially the like the coming to London yeah. stuff. Uh, the ghost ship's good. But, Lucy's Lucy, yeah. like vampire Lucy, is creepy. Genuinely, Dracula's castle is creepy. Genuinely, it's just the pacing hamstring. Mi- Mina and where the boys hunting Dracula is good on. until it goes on for way too long. Yeah, it all goes on just a bit longer than it needs to. It gets to where the climax should be, and it goes just a little longer, and you're like. Okay, we're we're done with this, please. So, it, uh, an interesting question I want to ask: Hill House or Dracula? Which is better? Dracula by far, by a country mile, Ben. Because I understand the characters of Dracula. So, do you think better better to go too long or too short? This is a tough one for us because we we always rail on books for being too long for going too ham. Ooh, yeah, that is a tough one because I think that I would rather at least understand all the characters and have it reach its potential. Because you could cut out stuff in Dracula and it'd be great. To get Hill House to be better, you have to do what the Netflix series did and basically rewrite the whole damn thing so that you can explore these characters in greater detail. And also, I gotta keep harping on it since you're bringing it up. As as odd as Dracula got, and they did have some cartoon characters, Ben, at the very no end Mrs. Montague. of the book, <laughs> yes, exactly, Mrs. Montague and Arthur don't show up <laughs> during what should be the climax, and it becomes a cartoon. Okay, so Nate, I'm going to do something. I'm doing this for my mom, who is one of the ten people listening to this who really likes this part for some reason. We're doing the words about books scoring rubric. Oh yeah. Cause your mom wanted, you yeah, to she do wanted it. me to do it for Hill house and we didn't do it. And she was very upset with me. Yeah. I was, I was having trouble determining how I wanted to score this, but let me, let me see if I can do it so, real quick. Yes. Uh, for those who do not know, we have a words about books scoring rubric that you can find at blog.wordsaboutbooks.ninja. It rates books on five categories, content and ideas, organization, use of language, personal preference, and our recommendation strength. Each of those categories can be given a one through five score with five being the highest, one being the lowest I use this to average and determine my Goodreads ratings because I am needlessly uh, statistical. <laughs> I don't know. I like data. Okay. We could just talk through it if you want. So, like, content and ideas. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm writing this okay, stuff down. Filling out his chart. Um, okay, I've got it. All right. Go ahead and let's run okay. it down. Content, so content and ideas. Content and ideas. What do you give it? I think I'd give it a four, so 15 points. So original ideas, plot points are present, clearly developed. Yeah, I waffle between a four and a five on this one. I almost want to lean towards five. I feel like I rarely give out fives. Yes, yeah, I, I do too, and that's a good that's a good policy to have. So the, what, the average score, by the way, for anyone who cares, which is probably none of you, you probably all shut it off by now. 55 points is straight down the middle, threes across the board. That's what I consider average. Yeah. So for content and ideas, uh, we list that as being exceptionally original, thoroughly developed in a way that has a long lasting impact on the reader. I kind of, I think I'm going to give it a five because Dracula... You know what? That's a good point. I, I didn't actually read the four uh, or the five because, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's how I am. I don't like to read. The long-lasting impact on the reader, yeah, because, I mean, look at how 
Dracula is in the cultural it, zeitgeist. It, it changed vampires forever. I don't know yeah. if Bram Stoker was the first one to do this. I don't want to say that he's 100% original here, but his version is the version that sticks. You can draw a straight line from Bram Stoker to Anne Rice to uh, Harris, whoever writes True Blood. Stephen King? I don't, I don't know. Uh, horror writers. <laughs> Char- <laughs> Charlene Harris? Is that who writes True Blood? I, f- I forget. But you can you can basically trace it all the way. It's still around today. <laughs> I just realized that my score... Okay. All right. You, go on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now this is where we're I, probably going to... I give it a five. This is where we're going to lose some all points. Right. Organization. All right. Uh, the main thing you need to know about organization is this is where we judge pacing. Organization is... Um, Probably a two. <laughs> so I was a little nicer. Uh, I decided to. I decided to do what you never do. I gave it two and a half. So I gave it. I eight do that. Points. I do that from time to time. So I think some of it has okay pacing. You know, too a little too slow, but you know, whatever. Uh, and then some of it has pacing that's just like really slow hard to follow my eyes glaze over i stop really paying attention until we get back to something interesting i think you could i decided to give it two and a half i think you could talk me around to this because one part of it being two points that we define on our rubric is that the organizational structure is kind of confusing or hard to follow it's not confusing it's not hard to follow it doesn't it's just boring I think I think it's hard to follow for me sometimes because it is boring. Yeah. yeah, but it doesn't fail to communicate. It's it's not intentionally or it's not unintentionally confusing. It's just boring. So, I think two point five is good. So, what do you say? Two point five is how many points? I put eight. I'm keeping eight track points. here. Okay. So right now, I got I got twenty plus eight. Okay. Right. Twenty eight. Yep. All right. Use of language. Use of language. This, I put this one on the rubric mostly for books that go the extra mile with their prose. Fucking English majors out there who just love them some language usage. You know who you are. I think maybe we should take into account the journaling factor, the it's a, it's newspaper factor. In England. The only thing I want to say is... The newspaper factor, the journal factor, the letter factor, um, the telegrams. There's there's a lot of different ways you could write. And unfortunately, it all sounds kind of like Bram Stoker. <laughs> like, I never really get the vibe that the newspaper is a newspaper. That, like, Van Helsing's diary is written with a significantly different tone or tenor than Mina's diary. They all just sound kind of like Bram Stoker. He just has one voice, but he's attempting to be many, many people. And that works against him in what he's going for. It's it's cute and it's dumb and it's fun, but it, it doesn't, it could be more. It doesn't go there. So I'd give this perfectly average three hmm okay i actually did give it a four. Oh, please explain maybe maybe because i was leaning on the the fact that it was victorian <laughs> definitely felt like it <laughs> i know that's not a bram stoker thing because it, it certainly feels like it was written at the time it was written <laughs> Not one person sent an email. <laughs> if that's your only reason, you have not talked me up. I'm going. <laughs> I'm going eleven. That's that's fair. That's a, fair. A three is eleven points. We, we, maybe we, it's also because I only experienced this through the power of an audiobook. So you know, all the characters were done by different people. Well, that's a that's an interesting thing. I'd actually give the audiobook performances a. I'd give the audiobook performances a four. I, I'd I give it a ten, 10 cherries out of three oranges. You know what there I mean? You know. That's, that is an unsighted, uh, the internet's least reliable pod, English 
Damn it. <laughs> no, just leave it in. You That's what very, they do. They do that. It. They do that rating stuff. So, okay. Uh, next one. Personal preference. This is This is totally up to you. We can give it wildly different ratings, and and that is all judgment free. What do you give it? I gave it a three. Solid thumbs in the middle. Generally positive, but not my thing. Horror is not my thing, and or just failed to impress some of the book. Like I said, <laughs> mostly the stuff that just goes on way too long is like, eh. I eh. I go with a. But a I liked a lot of it. I go with a four, but I'm I'm super into the vampire stuff. So it's like you said, all the good stuff's been mined out, refined, and done better. Yeah, and that's that's the that's the risk you run by going back. Yeah, I think that's valid, but I'm gonna give it a four. So my score is gonna be a little higher so far. Okay, and this is this is another one. It's not as subjective. Recommendation strength. Uh, I gave it a one. Do not recommend. Now nah, I'm fucking with you. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go with a. I went with a four. Strong recommendation to genre fans. So anyone who's big into horror, definitely big into vampires, should read this or listen to this. Apparently, it is free on Audible because I have two co- two different copies of it. Didn't even want that. I, mean, I actually just asked my. I asked my Alexa to play it, and it was like, okay, I'll start this other one. And I was like, wait, what? So, <laughs> yeah, go out, listen, or read it if that's your thing. Kind of a weaker recommendation to general audiences. You might still get some enjoyment out of it, but you're, you'll are you probably give it more of like a thumbs in the middle like I did. Yeah, I agree with everything you said. The only thing I'll add to that whole free on Audible thing, uh, if you want to read the the print version, it's free on Project Gutenberg. You can download um, an ebook, load it on your Kindle, and it's in the public domain. So words about books, we can edit it. We could you can have the words about books edition. Yeah, my point is, don't pay for Dracula unless you want a paper copy, because what I have found in researching for this episode is there are people out there that are publishing different versions with like changed language. I don't know if they're trying to make it Ooh. more Americanized or updated. The, they just keep adding in the N word. <laughs> if they do the reverse Huckleberry Finn, they just keep adding oh, no. it in. They're like, Oh my God, please stop. Okay. Well, yeah, but I agree with you. I think if you are somebody who wants to know, the origin story of Dracula, go ahead and read it. Um, if you're a horror fan, I think it's so foundational to so many other things that you would probably get more out of those things if you read this first. But if you are a filthy casual and you don't really care where all the ideas come from, you just yep. like true blood because Anna Paquin yep. is hot then you don't need to read Dracula. You can still enjoy True Blood without having read Dracula, and you probably would find Dracula very boring. Yeah, so my total point, uh, and I did not intend for this, but fittingly, my total score is 69 out of 100. What am I missing? Hang on. Did I, like, rate this way lower than you? Uh, You rated it similar, I feel like. Started with uh, 20, then 8. And then you gave it 11. Wait, how did I also get 69? Yeah. It is a perfect 69. Two 69s. That's what Dracula gets. That is the only <laughs> score Dracula could get. That is the perfect score for the book that put sexy vampires on the map. I am dropping this mic on the ground right now. I have been Ben. He has been Nate. Good night. He'll race anyone for a pint of juice. You better watch out for Dracula's deuce. No! I can't stand it! No! Scissor me, daddy ass. It has been brought to my attention that in my rush to drop the microphone, I forgot to thank our $10 patrons. So, of course, as always, thank you to Jamie and Isekai Sensei-sama. Your support makes this all possible.